welcome, welcome everyone uh, to this impromptu, uh, well, not, not impromptu, uh, Fractal Founder AMA. Um, so first of all, like, how are you guys doing? Everyone's been super busy, but uh, David, do you want to start? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, wow, it's just been insane. You know, we, um, we've done so much in such a small amount of time, and uh, it's, it seems like days feel like weeks uh, in terms of progress. Um, we, you know, we, we kicked off the marketplace late December. That was after an intense amount of hacking on Mike's part to uh, get us out the door with our first prototype. And, um, and we, we launched with a big fanfare in the largest NFT collection, Solana, at the same time, um, and just had an amazing outpouring of support from the Solana community. And uh, then we, we, we realized that um, we wanted to build a launchpad and help new teams enter the market, not just be a secondary, but also primary. So on February 1st, we had our first launch. Uh, Mint with House of Sparta, as many of you know, and it was it was really exciting. It was something that you know was was pretty smooth. We were very proud of it, and um, a lot of work went into that that first mint. And since we've had four mints, selling about an average of a million dollars in um, raising about a million dollars each in um, in each of the four mints. One of them, Yaku Corp, broke Solana for four minutes, which was crazy to see. Uh, and we've got a really awesome lineup of new mints uh, to be announced soon. Um, I think four of them are on right now for March. So we're just uh, we're dotting our I's and crossing our T's before we announce these to the community. But we're really excited by what we have in store. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, Austin, Mike? Oh, Mike, you want to go next? I want to hear about this, uh, what you've been up to. Yeah, I guess the big thing for me is obviously we started with a team of one in development. Um, it's it's good to see that the team's expanding. I think some of you would have seen them in chat. Um, so I guess we're now ramping up to um, really make this scale. Um, we're sort of working on some cool things that have come sort of in the coming months, like APIs and mobile. Um, so I'm excited to see what happens. And it's awesome to have a team now that I don't have to work 24 hours building this shit myself. So I'm excited. You can sleep now, Mike, once in a while. So we have, uh, how many engineers do we have now? We've got like four or five and we're hiring like mad and it's been, it's been incredible. We have a really strong team, very passionate folk that have just been crushing it with us. So. All right. Uh, Justin, do you have anything to add to that or we'll just dive right into some of the uh, questions that we've I've been, I've been, ha- I've been good. I've been having a lot of fun. Fractal is like the most fun right. thing I've worked on in at least a decade. And so we're, uh, you know, we're talking to a lot of game teams, talking to a lot of partners in the space, learning about crypto. Things are things are going. People are shopping on our marketplace, both the primary drops and the secondaries. So it's been fun. It feels like we've got some product market fit and things are going. And uh, yeah, a lot of stuff being worked on right now. We've got uh, we've got just such amazing. We're very privileged. We have a first row seat in this Web three gaming revolution. We have, we have. Um, you know, the ability to, to see what people are building in the space and the quality of some of the stuff that's coming is just inspiring. We're just, the next couple of years in this industry is just going to be revolutionary. All right. Okay. I guess we could use that as a segue uh, for the first question. We're talking about the future of the industry. So one of the questions, well, one of the questions that we're getting in the uh, channel is people are curious about the lifespan of games and how far into the future these projects are going to last. Um, so, because you know, so games right now are kind of known for having shelf lives. So, you know, games come and go. Uh, Fortnite is you know still extremely popular, but nowhere near as big as it was you know a couple of years ago. So, what are your guys' opinions on like the lifespan and the shelf life of games uh, in Web three? Yeah, I, I can I can chime in. I mean, I think actually one of the things that's cool about Web3 is that if things are built on an open blockchain, they sort of live on forever. No single game developer owns the assets. Um, they can, they're interoperable, and other games can come in and execute on a different roadmap or maybe even a better one with the same assets. Um, you, um, you don't get that same dynamic with the traditional gaming space. Uh, I, I'm really excited about the potential for games to interact and build on top of one another, because um, 
because that's uh, that's a superpower of crypto. So I'm not sure if um, I'm not sure if we're going to see the same type of life cycles that we had seen previously. For that reason, so I, I suppose the interesting thing for me is like DAOs and then games, obviously letting community drive it. I think like where a lot of game franchises have failed in the past is they've failed to listen to the community. I think the big thing for me is like a lot of these games are actually bringing their community to actually help the direction of the game, which I think is going to prolong their life more than some traditional games. Mm-hmm. Alignment of incentives, right, Mike? Like financial alignment, token, you know, native in-game currencies that can be used to incentivize the right behavior. And it, I think it, it, there are tools now with Web3 games that allow for alignment of incentives between the game developer and the players in ways that haven't been achievable before. Yeah, and you got to think like the interoperability, it means that even if a game ended up not expanding someone else can just pick up their assets and obviously like uh, like gary's mod and stuff came out is like you can obviously now create this world where the community starts to drive their own game that actually becomes its own sort of title so i think there's some cool shit that's coming in the future that's happened actually in the past right like there have been community servers for a lot of games once the actual developers have moved on because the community loves the game so much and i feel like that could like that, that can happen here in, in a much more comprehensive way and like a, a way with like much better continuity. All right, can we move on to the next question? Yeah, um, so when will Fractal add a rarity chart for all the listings? So we recently added the rarity feature, uh, but I've seen some people suggesting uh, in the community ideas tab, because uh, I mean, you guys have all checked out Fractal Ranks where they have the comparison chart. I think someone built a mock-up where that chat, would, uh, sorry, that chart would pop up uh, under the listings on Fractal. So is that something that we're going to be building anytime soon, Mike? You, you can't ask me on this one. I, I want to release really some sort of rarity and David, David won't let me because he's still got this master plan for how fractals uh, evolve over time. So you can ask David this one. David, do you want to drop some, just... drop some alpha on that? <laughs> well, we said when we launched the fractal NFT collection that the power levels are subject to change slightly over time. And, um, and then in the fractal radio episode, we talked about a little bit more detail about what we meant by that. We see the Fractal NFTs as a metagame in some ways uh, that other game developers can build on top of and potentially even power up Fractals. Um, the details of that metagame are still being worked out, but we're very excited by the possibilities there. Anyway, as it relates to rarity, obviously rarity is not static in a dynamic collection, so rarity is also something that will migrate over time. Um, and so you have to sort of think about rarity differently in a collection like the Fractal NFT. And I think there's going to be a lot of other uh, collections that are of the same shape as Fractal NFT, but I think we're just really early in that regard. We just only scratched the surface of what NFTs and NFT collections can be. So especially games, I think they're going to push the envelope of what NFT collections are and how dynamic they are. So, but in any case, I think the question though, specifically from the audience was about the rarity feature of Fractal Marketplace. Um, we just, we launched that a couple weeks ago. It's a really awesome feature because it's something that really uh, simplifies the discovery process. And, you know, everyone's using moon rank or how rare or, you know, a myriad of other options, but why not build that directly into the marketplace? Um, we did an analysis of the ways in which the industry, the Solana community, has defined rarities, and we matched to it uh, in an attempt to just make it more clear exactly how our rarities work. Um, we'll probably want to do more to explain to users what these rarities mean. I don't think it's documented anywhere on the site. That's just a function of us having pushed it live quickly. But we will be following up with a little bit more polish in the user experience. So just give us a little bit of time there. Anything to add, Mike? Yeah. Yeah, I guess another reason why we probably stepped into Rarity is obviously Rarity helps people discover NFTs across different projects because obviously if we have one standard across a lot of games, it means that, hey, if you want to find a mythic NFT in your price range, you can basically just filter site-wide, which we don't have yet, but obviously it's a feature we plan to bring in that you can just, hey, I want to buy a mythic, and then you can just filter by all games and maybe find one that you really like. So. The good thing about Rarity, we're trying to make it consistent so that if you see a Mythic, 
win one collection, it's kind of equal to a mythic in another collection. So therefore, we can kind of make things seem a little bit more uh, uniform so you can find stuff easier. That's the idea long term, and we'll keep working towards that. And fractal, fractal rarity is a, a pure statistical rarity. So that means it's just, it's just numerical how, how rare something is. Other rarity calculations, like how rare, are actually a bit more subjective in ways that you might not realize or uh, folks might not realize. The, um, for example, uh, Thugbirds on how rare uh, emphasizes the role in gang as a, uh, an attribute that matters more. Um, they do that because they believe that that attribute is more important than the others, but that is sort of an arbitrary choice. That's not a statistical rarity. That's another type of rarity, which I guess is a bit more opinionated. The rarity that Fractal goes out with is purely statistical. Right, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see you know, how the hidden attributes affects the rarity. So even you know, people like the, the Hexa faction uh, Fractal is probably the most valuable in terms of floor price right now. But I'm excited to see how in attributes might affect. So maybe like a tri fractal could be much rarer, like a supersonic fractal could be much rarer than a hexa one. So that's going to be interesting to see uh, how games use that. Um, so another question here that we've got: um, fractal first starts off as an NFT marketplace, but now is adding additional side ventures like gaming tournaments. So we've got for everyone who doesn't know, we're running a League of Legends gaming tournament over the next few days. So that'll be interesting. Uh, if you want to check that out, go into the sidebar. Um, we've got all the teams listed in the sidebar and we're going to be posting updates on Twitter as well. Um, but are there any plans for Fractal become a, to become a lifestyle brand and a multifaceted organization vice just being an NFT marketplace? So yeah, good... I think, uh, yeah, so, <laughs> uh, Justin do you, or David, do you want to take this? Okay, I think Justin. I think Justin should take that one first, but I'll definitely have thoughts there. Sure. So you know, like Fractal is a NFT marketplace, and that's like our actual business, right? Like all the other things that we're doing are just ways to like have fun with the community, engage people who are interested in Fractal, and engage in the Fractal community. And so, just to be clear, like the business is like we're making a marketplace for NFTs, but things like the tournament, the gaming tournament, that's like for fun. We're not, there's no way that we make money from that. You know, um, we are building a clothing line or like we have a, we have a merch plan that we're really excited about. Uh, that's going to be announced in the next couple weeks, I think next week or two. Well, I think, um, I think you just announced it. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. I guess, I guess that's true. No, I, I, that's true. Th th we're, we're we've definitely something. alluded, we've alluded to it though. That this yeah. is the, I guess Justin's dropping the, uh, the alpha here yeah well we were gonna we were gonna i mean we just wanted to, like people have been asking for merch for a long time but we did like I, i've gotten a lot of merch from different companies and most of it sucks and we just didn't want to like release anything that sucks so we're gonna we want to release stuff that we would actually wear so we are, where we spent more time we spent a lot of time like making sure that it's going to be good you know yeah we want we want to release premium premium products only <laughs> Do, do, um, do you want to talk a bit more about the? I, I, do you want to talk a bit more about the uh, the design process, Justin? I know you you, you said you've worked with a couple of a uh, couple of designers, but or uh, merch sources. We have like that much to say about that, to be honest. I think, I think, right. uh, you know, we just. I don't know if there's that without revealing like what we're doing or anything. I don't know if there's that much to say. Okay. So I mean, I just well, think well, I would well, say that we 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 spent a lot of time working on coming up with creative ideas like among our team that are very like you know fractal related you know uh, Let, let's like, let's keep that a know. secret then. but i i'll, um, I'll address I'll, I'll take a stab at addressing the the original question which is you know what is fractal going to become a lifestyle brand and i mean i think to the extent we we sort of see ourselves as a community of web3 gamers right at the end of the day i mean we, we monetize and we we are a company i guess through being a marketplace, but there's a community here under the hood that's really fascinating and interesting and valuable and exciting. People are making true friendships in our Discord and they're building in public with our hackathon and they're having fun strategizing how they're going to pwn the other uh, factions in our tournament this weekend. Um, that is something that's incredibly special to watch and witness and it's one of the most special 
aspects for me personally, just to see this outpouring of support from the community. And we, we were blessed with this from the, from the first, you know, the first AMA onward. But I just feel this magic happening with our community. And um, we're still super early and the community will get larger, but the vibe is so amazing. And so in some ways we are a lifestyle brand. It's just, um, it's just not formal. Uh, crypto is the lifestyle. <laughs> um, all right. So another question here that we've got is, what are the plans for the remaining unreleased fractals? So we've done some giveaways for those, uh, but do we have any major plans in the works, David, for how we might want to uh, use these unreleased fractals? We want to reward members of our community. Um, nothing specific to to announce here, but we're not in any rush to distribute them. We, mm -hmm. we also see that as a huge opportunity for us to incentivize the right behaviors inside our community to foster a really fantastic product and environment. So, you know, stay tuned on that, but it's nothing, um, nothing really near term there. I think one of the other questions, so there, there are a lot of questions actually regarding the, the fractals NFT specifically. Um, the, the other the other question related to that is by the same uh, the same person, Lil Gary, uh, is you know people have brought up questions about how to earn income by investing in fractals. So is there going to be? Some, can you talk about whether or not in the future there's going to be some kind of NFT staking mechanism, or if the team is interested in doing this or not? And um, you know, like what what kind of to what extent have we you know have we discussed that and um, how much can you talk about that? Well, yeah, so there's definitely the metagame that I was mentioning earlier is going to be core to our roadmap. The fractal power up, so to speak, is going to be a game in itself. And to the extent that fractals that have higher power trade for a, you know increased amount of money on the secondary market, perhaps there's a way to earn from that game. Uh, the fractal NFT, though, you know, we have to be obviously very careful because it cannot it cannot come anywhere close to what a security is uh, for regulatory reasons. So, you know, revenue share and and such are much harder. We are looking at these types of things. We have really great lawyers, and we're looking at all of the potential opportunities for us to align financial incentives with our community. But it's tough, um, and you know, we're. Unlike many other crypto startups, we're a Delaware C Corp, publicly doxed, of course, as as you guys know, it's important to us. Um, we're you know we're staking our professional and personal reputation into the company. We're not a shady Bahamas foundation without with anonymous founders. Um, so we have to stick by the letter of the law and work with uh, work with our lawyers on anything we do related to um, rev split. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean, if even if we don't do a rev split, that we can't have a lot of fun with the fractal NFT because we see it as a game in itself, a game that actually carries across many other games. And so I'm really excited by the potential for us to uh, to do amazing things there. And um, more more of that will be announced, you know, over the course of months. Um, so. I guess, like, since Fractal is centered at such a, like, pivotal position, I guess, and I think Web3 gaming specifically is going to become, like, a huge on-ramp for people to get into crypto, uh, especially the financial side of things. So one of the questions I'm seeing here is that, when, like, what kind of, so be, beyond just being an NFT trading marketplace, like, what kind of position does Fractal want to take in terms of, like, educating people or, like, uh, becoming, like, the first port of call for people to get into crypto. Yeah, I mean, I think the reason why we started the company was because we felt like games was going to be the first 100 million active user uh, use case of crypto. The game, gaming yeah. industry is huge and NFTs just make so much sense for games because games have had digital assets since the computers were invented, right? So... Yeah. Totally. I mean, we sort of see our we, we sort of see Fractal as just really early in this tidal wave of industry shift, and um, we're building all we can to support the game developers to build the most amazing experiences. And we're also trying to participate in the ecosystem ourselves. And the Fractal NFT is actually our way to do that. 
uh, you know, we stepped into the role as NFT collection creators back in December. And that gave us a lot of context. And then we're doing this interesting power up metagame, which is there's game design, there's incentive design in there, which are the same challenges that our partner gaming partners have to solve as well. Um, so I think there's a lot of there's a lot of ways in which we want to bring that future forward faster, and that's what we started the company for. Awesome, uh, Justin. Do you have anything to add to that, or Mike? Yeah, I, I was just going to say, like, I, I think obviously David and, and the team obviously help the community a lot by they are reviewing games every single day. I suppose they're trying to filter through the noise a little bit. So, like, I guess a lot of what we're doing is making sure that the game titles that are doing really interesting stuff are coming to coming to the forefront of sort of the website and all these sort of things that people don't have to do all the research that you would currently have to do to try and find the projects that you want to sort of um, get involved with. And probably David can probably expand on Launchpad a little bit, maybe. Yeah, we, I mean, we say no to a lot of games. And um, there's a lot of folks, unfortunately, in crypto that just don't have the right motivations. Fractal Launchpad is not just about show me your ID and let's raise you a million dollars to develop a thing. It's a lot more than that. Um, you guys heard Justin's words on this back a few weeks ago with the Bloomsville rug. And, you know, there's been many other rugs besides that. There's a lot of people in crypto that are in it for the wrong reasons. And um, it's hard and takes a massive amount of energy for us to um, get to know a team well enough to bring them onto the launch pad. And... Um, and that's, that's actually, it's a different business model than other marketplaces, frankly. Uh, it doesn't scale. Uh, we, spend, we spend a lot of time lining up for successful mints, uh, obviously making sure that the team is credible and doxed to at least the Fractal team. But they have a good plan that we believe they'll create an awesome game, that they're doing it for the right reasons. Um, and then we also want to make sure that the mint itself is a success. And we are patient. A lot of the games that we like that have, they don't have enough um, yet uh, in terms of community or traction or, um, or just proof of concept, we ask to wait. And, and frankly speaking, some of them don't and they go and mint on other platforms and sometimes they, they stall in their mint. And it's, it's an art, not a science uh, to figure out how to build community from scratch. And what we're finding ourselves is in a position to help some of the best game developers and best teams that we want to back to help create that community from scratch. And it's a longer term approach. It means that we're going to have a lot less mints on the Fractal Launchpad, but they're going to be ones that we will put our brand behind. And we think in a sea of rugs and low quality projects and projects who don't have it in the, they aren't doing it for the right reasons. Um, that's going to be a really valuable uh, beacon of hope in the industry. And, um, and it's going to be a really important one for us uh, as a company. There are so many great games coming out. We don't want them to get lost in the, the sea of the frenzy of the rest of the ecosystem. All right. Yeah, speaking of the launch pad, I, I know a lot of people have been asking about, um, well, just in general, what what a like what kind of specific advantages can we give more to higher fraction fractal holders? So right now, uh, it seems like the main you know, benefit we're giving people who are fractal holders are the whitelist tokens and access to VIP events um, in our Discord channel. But do we have any plans for how to make it more specific to higher fraction holders? Yeah, I mean, I think there's going to be a whole bunch of... Um things that sort of occur organically to game developers that build on top of the Fractal NFT. And, and so just naturally by the supply constraints of the Hexa and the Penta factions, like I think there's going to be, there are going to be more concrete examples over time. But as you guys know, when we, when we talk about the Fractal NFT, we also just want to sort of leave it open to the industry to interpret how to build on these various rarities. And we don't want to have too many, we don't want to hold too many opinions on the matter. What we can do, though, um, in this metagame we're talking about is decide ourselves about you know, what, what types of perks come with higher factions. And we will definitely want to reward folks that have um, a little bit more you know, in, invested in the project with, uh, with rarer fractals. Um, so the other thing is that 
in the past, the, the whitelist strategy for mints has always been up to the games. But uh, in the past, we've seen games choose to whitelist large swaths of the fractal population. And I think we are just about to announce a project that is, um, that is taking a different approach. Actually, probably a few projects that are going to be taking a different approach with which factions they target. Nothing specific to share here, but I think that um, more, the more rare factions are going to start to see a bit of access to premium uh, mint events that might, that might um, satisfy some of that question. All right. Um, one of the questions I'm, I saw here, which I really like, this is not actually specific to Fractal, but I think um, each of you might be able to give like a really unique perspective on this. And that's what advice would you give to college students right now? So that, that's not specific to Fractal, but I think it's, a, it's an interesting question. Justin, this, um, this one's meant for you, buddy. Guys, <laughs> start trading <laughs> NFTs because you're going to need a... This is the future. <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, I feel like for, for college students, my advice is always like, you should optimize for learning. It like, goes for all people in their like, 20s, you know, early in their teens and 20s. It's like, just optimize to get out there and like try new things, Let's have new experiences and learn and uh, um, broadly. And then just that, that's the best thing to do, I think, in order, in order to like kind of really find what you love to do. So I was just trying to get people to, to try it, you know, put yourself in the path of most learning. Experiment. Lots of experiments. You don't know what's going to work in your career, in your hobby. I think that oftentimes things that start small end up huge and change your life. I, I started selling TV wall mounts on a Shopify store, and that started that kickstarted my career in e-commerce. Got me involved in Shopify early. It led to me in incubating a company in the e-commerce space, and ultimately led me to. Um, to see the opportunity here in Fractal. Think, small things lead to big things. And so in that environment, I think when you're just starting out with your career, um, I would suggest planting lots of little seeds and watering them a little bit every day and seeing which ones take off because some of them can turn into giant oak trees. Wow, that was really cliched, but you, know, you get my point. No, I completely agree with you, David. I think that's the biggest thing I've learned is like, I wish I had have known what I know when I was younger because like I was so hungry when I was younger and you have so much energy so you can do all these crazy things and you don't have obviously you don't have reliabilities and the whole as well what you get is when you get older. So like any risk you're gonna take, take it as young as early and just make dumb decisions and make mistakes because you end up making more learnings and progressing further if you do it, I think. All right. That was that was pretty insightful. Um <laughs> coming from someone who graduated <laughs> college uh almost a year and a half now and i had no idea what i wanted to do so um i started i joined a podcast <laughs> with uh, with justin um so that that's been a wild ride and uh now now we're doing a fractal so it's i think experimenting is like one of the one of the most important things that you can do and it's like especially if you don't know what to do experimenting is probably like your best option because like the worst thing that could happen is you just don't like it and um you, you don't have to do it All right so that was uh that was good insight there um so going back to fractal um mike we want data when are you opening a beta api that's a technical question for mike well, uh, I, I won't say too much, but I've been writing doc API documentation for the last two days, so uh, it's coming. Um, the actual release date will be more clear on, but um, we're opening up all the data. So you guys will be able to build some crazy shit on top of us. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited for the, um, the F100 stuff. I, some, of, some of the projects there are like really, really impressive. Um, so we'll, we'll be, for those who don't know, we'll be having our event uh, for the F100 announcement on the 8th of March. Um, so stay tuned for that. We'll announce the finalists on Twitter and Discord pretty soon. And uh, we'll be able to see what our community has built. And uh, some of the stuff is amazing. Um, this is just a reminder for everyone listening. Uh, if you have any questions, please go ping them in the AMA questions chat under the events tab. And then uh, we'll pick the best ones and we'll try to, uh, we'll try to, I'll try to pass them on to, David, Justin, and Mike here. Um, so in the dichotomy between growing fractal on Solana and going multi-chain, where are we? And where are the team 
uh, putting most of their efforts in. Do we have any updates on? Well, I mean, we're still a very small team, and we have um, we have a high standard for what product we build on any chain. Solana is an amazing community of devoted, enthusiastic NFT enthusiasts. Uh, Phantom has 2 million users and growing fast. That's just one of the wallets out there. It's a really fantastic sandbox for us to prove some things that we want to prove, which is that Web3 games are going to be more powerful, more fun to play, more aligned than their predecessors. And we want to stick the landing on Solana and make sure that we have a really fantastic uh, set of games building the right stuff on this chain. Um, We do have plans to go multi-chain still, but as a small team, it's really important that we focus. You know, we have five engineers. We're hiring fast, but we're, um, we're a small team still. And the last thing we want to do is put our wood behind too many arrows and not deliver some really high quality product experiences on any chain. So for the foreseeable future, I think you guys are going to see us on Solana only, but we're not Solana maxis, although we are fans of the community. Um, we see a lot of games that aren't launching on Solana. There's a lot of L1 Ethereum with Polygon, Immutable, um, some on Avalanche. Um, there's, there's some cool stuff happening in other pockets of crypto, no doubt. But just a matter of priority and delivering um, on our initial scope. It's Solana for now. So here's a question by uh, our, one of our Good Vibes members, Tree. Uh, shout out to Tree. Has Fractal considered the necessity of making drastic changes to the minting and sale process of gaming NFTs to make the experience more focused on the gamers? Um, that's in line with the current gaming industries. So uh, ultimately, is the goal for blockchain gaming to be the same as buying and playing a game on Steam, where like people just accept like a loss of time and money uh, as an investment, or is or will Web three be something else entirely? Yeah. Such a good question, Tree, um, because I think you're right. Gaming NFTs are different than PFP projects in a few different ways, but I think like you sort of have the right mental model there. Um, You know, obviously trading NFTs post mint is fun and it's a game in itself. And I, I love to do it personally, and I'm sure you guys listening like it too. But what games are is a source of entertainment. It's like going to the movies. You know, like even if the crypto winter hits us hard, at the end of the day, if you own a tank in Panzer Dogs and you can blow shit up with your seven year old, you know, kid on a Sunday, you have value and you belong to a community of folks that are seeing that same value and you can create real lasting friendships in these games. So I think that, um, I think that we might see different trading behaviors and different holding patterns for gaming collections than we've seen in other other collections like art. And um, I think that also, you know, what could Fractal do to align interests? I mean, one of the, one of the experiences that we th- are thinking about is called the Fractal Vault, which is potentially, and this is like very conceptual at this point, so don't quote me on any of this stuff, but what if during the mint and before secondary market opened, users could commit their NFT into a smart contract for some period of time and essentially give the game developer some time to hit some milestone without indication that they're going to sell because they wouldn't be able to, they'd locked it up. But in exchange, the game comes to the, the diamond hands holders that have done this with additional perks, airdrops, in-game currency drops, um, special privileges, special levels, all that stuff. Fractal wants to build these types of features because we want to align the people that'll mint with the people that'll play. And our official stance on this is you, we, should, we only want you guys to mint or to buy an NFT on Fractal for a game you cannot wait to play. That's the standard. It's, it's a higher standard than most. Um, and there'll always be traders and flippers because that's sort of a game in itself and there's nothing against that. But we really ultimately want people who are going to be long term in these games because games will take potentially years to build um the the serious games the ones we're most excited about are two years away from a 
a launch, at least of the full game, right? They might launch avatar builders and such before then and lots of fun things on the roadmap. But like if you're talking about building a Halo or a Fortnite, you know, these things take tens of millions of dollars, sometimes hundreds of millions of dollars to really get out the door. The, the quality of the, the studios that are starting to build on blockchain and, and partnering with Fractal are just astounding, but they're going to require a bit more diamond hands from their communities. And um, we're going to do all we can to support that behavior and reward it. Awesome. And so have so that's almost kind of like a, so what, what you're talking about is like almost staking, right? Like staking an NFT um, for future rewards. Exactly. Uh, it's it's yeah. a general staking primitive across all of the Web three games that that launch on um, Fractal. Um, I guess just to add to this a little bit is obviously the two things that where we are really starting to do things differently in the gaming industry because games are asking it for us is um, some people haven't heard of them, but obviously semi fungible tokens. So they're they're basically NFTs, but there's a higher quantity. So like companies like Star Atlas launched with this. So this is something we're going to bring into our system. Um, so they change game dynamics a lot because obviously individually they still have utility, but you can trade them in larger volumes. Um, so that's going to be coming to us. And then we obviously have the fractal marketplace, but we're also to help obviously game onboarding. We're also going to be embedding our marketplace inside games so that the on-ramp sometimes isn't directly through fractal, but it's also through the games themselves. And this is where we're sort of getting really integrated into the game space. And this is this is what this is coming from the games more and what they want to do, and it definitely is more about the gaming side rather than the trading side of sort of crypto today. So we're definitely we're releasing features that are gaming focused a lot faster than anyone else in the industry currently. So there's going to be a lot of those rolling out soon, um, and they're going to be pretty awesome. Um, another qu uh, question from Chris, one of our Discord celebrities, our good vibes mods. Um, has Fractal considered exchange fee discounts for Fractal NFT holders? I know this is something that you know we, we have talked about um, for different faction holders. Um, so, you guys want to speak on that? Yeah, this is um, this is definitely something we're considering deeply and and might do. It just is something that we need to make sure our lawyers are comfortable with. We want to stay out of jail so we can continue building awesome products. <laughs> it's easier. It's easier to do. The internet sucks in jail, so. We'll get a lot more done outside. There's also the technical side too. So like we actually, we try and stick to standard contracts where possible because it means that they're not just ours and the community can interact with them as well. When we start to go through custom stuff like this, we have to build custom contracts, which which is, which is we will probably consider at some point, but it also means that we lose uh, support in some areas with them. Um, oh, yeah, there's, there's security and um, numbers. To, I mean, Fractal's built on... Smart contracts of Metaplex, unmodified. Um, I, you know, we use Auction House. We use, um, obviously, the Metaplex uh, candy machine and standard. If we deviate from the standard, there's uh, smart contract risk, and that is um, obviously something we have to take very seriously. So when, where possible, we go through the standard channels. Um, yeah, so, so Mike's just pointing out that to do things like that, we'd actually have to deviate. I don't think that would hold us back from doing this. I think, honestly, the the truth is that there's a gray area with regulation in the USA around how you can distribute value to a community, and um, we just have to be really careful. You know, um, we'll 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 be able to do things like this, but we just have to be careful and take it one step at a time so that we stay in good standing and um, and keep it keep it safe. Yeah. Uh, this is just a quick reminder for everyone who's in the voice channel. Uh, if you do have any questions, please post them in the AMA questions channel under the events tab. Um, do you guys want to do ten minutes at the end where we have people, you know, raise their hands and then we can bring them up, uh, bring them up on stage um, so they can ask a couple questions? Let's uh, let's let's do the let's just keep doing uh, written questions. I feel like it's so much more efficient. It always gives me like takes people a long time to. All right. To, figure out if their mic is working and stuff yeah we've, we've got plenty of questions but uh yeah please please post your questions in the channel um and we'll, and we'll uh, forward them on so uh this question is about twitch justin so if you want to take this one uh that'd be great <laughs> that'd be pretty relevant uh any talks of twitch integrating of the fractals i.e holders of certain fractals get emotes and 
this is actually related to maybe like a bigger question that I'm, I have, which is how is Fractal going to take advantage of the, not just gaming economy, but the gaming creator economy specifically. So. Yeah, that's great. So, so in terms of Twitch integration, I know we've been asked that a lot. There's nothing on the <laughs> horizon yet. Um, uh, in terms of the second part, which is maybe a little more interesting, how are we going to like integrate with the creator economy? Like we've seen like a lot of different creators reach out and they want to get involved and you know, they're interested in helping promote games or trying games, trying new games. And so uh, right now we're just helping match those people up with, you know, games that are coming out. But uh, I think we're, you know, we're kind of thinking about like, how can we, turn that into a community of creators who are interested in Web3 and blockchain games. So uh, kind of experimenting with that right now, recruiting people, but like there's no real, there's no like firm program or plan yet. So if you're, you know, if you're a creator out there and you're interested in having a conversation, I'm open to chatting with you. Awesome. Um, are there any, so, you know, we, we've seen recently um, in, the, in the past year, some of the, uh, more established gaming developing companies like Ubisoft and Microsoft trying to move into the gaming NFT space. And, you know, they haven't really been that successful. Um, so one of the questions is, uh, are there any concerns for Fractal as a gaming hub or a marketplace when companies uh, try to move into the space again um, as, as a, to start their own gaming marketplaces so what what differentiates fractal uh from those types of entities coming into the space there's a very quickly growing crypto native gaming community that is highly aligned with fractal and that's that we're building for them that is going to grow larger and larger and larger and eventually eclipse the traditional gaming industry this is what we believe strongly at fractal it's going to take 10 years it's not a quick transition, but we just believe that the, this is a platform for new games, just like the iPhone, and it is inevitable that that shift is going to happen. Larger players that are more entrenched and, and more traditional might view crypto as a, um, a way to further monetize their existing base, and so their communities don't actually feel that alignment from the start. And frankly, it's going to be hard for some of them to make a transition. I do think some of them will but they're navigating treacherous waters because it's hard to keep communities um, aligned because you have to be consistent with your previous decisions and you have a lot of history and baggage and um, game dynamics and power balances and all this stuff. So it's not surprising that there's, there's some pushback when these larger games uh, flirt with crypto. At the same time, though, it's not um, it's not going to hold the Web three gaming revolution back. It's just um, it's just part of the part of the mix, part of the story. Mike, Justin, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, you know, I think our strategy is always just to focus on building the best thing for the game companies, the best thing for for the community, and like that's what we did with Twitch. We had tons of competition from Google and Facebook and other other competitors, but if you just focus on the community and your and your customers and like you'll build something, build something better. And so I'm, I'm not really worried about other players entering the market. I mean, what, yeah, what, one of the questions um, that I, I've, I've been seeing pop up in general, uh, in general chat a lot over the past few days is why focus on games specifically uh, when it, it seems almost like a disadvantage uh, when, you know, comparing to other marketplaces that have, you know, PFP NFTs or like just general art NFTs. So why try to capture like one small slice? Well, it's not going to be a small slice, <laughs> frankly, like the, the gaming slice is going to be the biggest of them all. Um, so I guess that pretty much answers the question. It's like, it, it's, it's, if you're building specifically for games and developers, that that's the huge advantage. Um, you're not catering to everyone. You're catering very specifically to, to the gaming market. So, That's right. Yeah, I think uh, it's just like Twitch. You know, we, with, with Twitch, we focused really on how do we cater this one market of game, you know, gaming related streams, like you know, game streamers, and we we thought like those are the people who, you know, that's a segment. This is its own community, and um, that it's bigger than we thought it would be, or we bigger than it was at the moment, and so you know, all that came to pass. But like 
here, I think the game companies, the people building games want specific features that you don't necessarily want if you're like a PFP project or something else. And so really just focused on, <clears throat> yeah, on by focusing on this segment, I think we can just make sure to do a really good job for that customer segment. Yeah, I, I also find that on engineering. So like what we're building there, like PFP projects, pretty much all the infrastructure already exists. Like it's pretty easy to load up a candy machine and load up some images and you're done. Well, obviously what we're doing more than anything and like what my time goes in is the games have requirements that the tech doesn't even exist yet. So like most of our tech is basically engineering new stuff that hasn't existed before just so that these games can accomplish what they want. So I guess we're more about PFPs exist now, but like games are going to now exist in the future and we have to unlock them to be able to do that. So like the reason we don't support PFPs is to be honest, it's actually it's already sold. Like people can load up JPEGs and sell them all day which is what realistically it is. But obviously gaming is about actually utility and you actually create value because people are actually interacting with these things on a daily basis. So for me, that's why I'm passionate about this because we're actually unlocking a new industry that doesn't exist yet rather than focusing on one that already does. Um, are there any plans for lending NFTs via Fractal for games like Panzer Dogs or Mini Royale? Um, this is something that, you know, th there was some discussion around this, I think in the first AMA that we did with you guys. Um, so have, are there any updates to those plans? Like, have we, you know, started working on that? So uh, from my side, I guess, when you think about lending, it probably sits more with the game. And I think if we're going to release some lending stuff, it's going to be through our API so that games can enable lending within their games. Um, because the discovery is a little bit hard. Um, and then, to be honest, when you want to lend, you're going to be playing the game, and that's why you want to lend in the first place. So I think if we're ever going to do this, it's going to come into the API. Um, it's, I would say it's not a huge priority for us, if I'm going to be honest, because there's a lot of other features that come before lending. Um, but it is something, obviously, this whole industry is going to keep expanding. And like staking, lending, crafting, these are all features that games want. And that's where we'll definitely build them on the API side so that games can start enabling this for their users. So one of the, one of the like, there's been a lot of questions, I think, popping up now more about the, the financial utility of uh, having a fractal in the marketplace because I think people are really interested in supporting projects um, that they you know they really believe in but you know having obviously when we when we airdrop the fractal nft to our community we want to give them benefits and encourage everyone to trade on the fractal marketplace so you know, we, we had an earlier question about you know the reduction of exchange fees but is there, so someone here has suggested that maybe a more plausible idea uh, instead of an exchange fee is having a discount on the royalty fees of the partner games to the fractal holders. So maybe like 1% of that um, would give it a lot of value to fractals. So what, what's, what's your guys' opinion on that? I think it's interesting. I mean, it sort of, you know, sort of begs the same answer as before, which is we have to be careful about how we do this, but those types of ideas are really cool to think about and we should talk about them in our yeah. discord. Yeah. Um, for anyone who has, you know, ideas about how we might be able to create value um, for our community, you can drop them in the community ideas chat. Um, we do go through those, we respond to those and we definitely discuss them um, internally as well. So please send, please send your ideas to the community okay. ideas channel in chat. Yeah, for sure. Um, Let's see. Uh, does Fractal have any concerns about the more appealing games, G portals, being the rich and not having low entry points, especially in a time where free to play games are the highest performing? I think that's a really interesting question. We're in such early phases of the industry that, um, and especially with Ethereum having made a lot of people a lot of money, the floor prices on NFTs can be thousands of dollars for simple games. We think that this, the future is going to look very different. You know, there's going to be a lot more inclusive, much larger collections of assets. The reason why the Solana blockchain is really interesting for games in particular is because these games are going to have potentially hundreds of thousands or maybe millions of assets of all different types. You know, you go on like Tiny Colony website. Tiny Colony was a launch partner of ours. They were, I think, our second mint. And um, you can see like they have all the, all the, the, the objects that will interact with each other. They're airdropping pets soon and they have potions and they've got all these other things. I think, um, I think inevitably we're going to see the price come down of 
these assets just by virtue of the volume increasing. But these these are problems that you only face when you actually have a game with millions of players. So I think it's just going to be an evolution to that end state. Almost running out of questions here, but um, will Fractal create an automated escrow function to safely trade NFTs amongst players, especially as games build out and NFTs start representing micro items, trading will probably become necessary. I guess the idea early was that Fractal wouldn't have an escrow feature. Um, so th this is a direct question about, about the escrow feature. So well, this is just about, I think, I think this is just about facilitating peer-to-peer -peer trades. Um, and and doing it in a safe and doing it in a safe manner. I mean, in some ways, that's actually what the secondary market of Fractal does right now. Um, it allows two people who don't necessarily trust one another to transact. So I don't I don't actually know if there's something else we would build here, but I would love to hear it in the uh, in the brainstorm uh, in Discord. Yeah, I'd like to hear about this too because obviously the one thing that's coming up with obviously the difference between trading and buying and selling is actually goes back to that royalty question. Um, there seems to be a relaxed view on royalties when it comes to trading versus buying and selling. So I, for that reason, I think we would probably look at it at some point because uh, when you trade, obviously, even games probably see the fact that you shouldn't have to pay royalties if you're trading one asset for another. So I think that there is some interesting conversations that can be had, but yeah. Oh, sorry. I realized I misinterpreted the question. This is about trading one asset for another not peer-to-peer -peer, uh, purchase. Got it. Yeah, so then ignore my answer and replace with Mike's. All right. Um, well, the last couple more here. We've got, um, is the team planning slash working on creating profile pages or accounts for users on Fractal? Um, this would invite influencers or collections to display the collection. Um, so having basically people having like a profile gallery um, available for display on Fractal. I think that's an interesting idea. I think we should do this, and it's definitely something we're going to end up doing. Um, yeah, I think that it's there's a lot of ways in which we'll make Fractal feel more like a social network, potentially live chat integration, for example, with a sort of a Twitch-like vibe. Um, profile pages are are a no-brainer in that in that world. So definitely, likely, I think. Um, so I think we're almost coming up to the hour. Um, so let's. Is there anything else that you guys want to talk about before we go? Um, those were great questions, by the way. Thank you, everyone, for uh, for submitting them. Those were some uh, really interesting questions about the future of Fractal. Um, I hope you guys learned a bit more about where we're heading and what we're doing. Um, do you guys want have anything else to say before we uh, wrap things up? I'll, I'll just say I wanted to thank everybody. You know, you, you guys are what we're building for the outpouring of support from our community um, at every moment, every turn, all of our initial mints, they've just been all just thanks to you. And um, we really appreciate you. We're working harder than ever before to, uh, to continue the velocity and, you know, continue what, what amazing thing we've started here together. So appreciate you all. Yeah. All right. For, for everyone who joined uh, this event a bit late or, uh, missed our announcement and you know, has, has just joined. Um, this conversation, I think, is being recorded uh, by one of our community members. I've, I've pinged them um, so that we can get a recording for this. We'll get it edited, and we'll get the full thing uh, posted. So if you miss the early parts of this, don't worry. You'll be able to see this on the Fractal Radio YouTube channel, and uh, we'll also post a link in Discord as well. Thanks, All right. Guys. All right. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for coming. I uh, really appreciate you guys. See ya. See y'all.